So for um, number six, we want to take the area bounded between these two curves, and I've gone ahead and I've drawn them. Um, so it's this orange curve for x minus x squared, and the blue curve y is equal to x. Um, and then the area between them is this thing that I've shaded in yellow, and we want to revolve it about the y-axis. So the first thing that we have to do is um, we have to look at the points where they intersect, which is here and here, and that is going to tell us um, where our sum is going to be, right? Because we're going to sum it from this first point to the second point horizontally across the x-axis. So to do that, we have to set these two equations equal to each other. Um, so we say that x is... I'll do that in a different color. x is equal to 4x minus x squared. Um, so I'm going to bring everything over to the left. So we have the x squared, and then x minus 4x minus 3x is equal to 0. <coughs> we factor out an x, so that gives us x minus 3 is equal to 0. Um, and this means that x is equal to 0, or x is equal to positive 3, right? So we can see here that our integral, our sum, is going to be from 0, that's our first boundary here, all the way out to 3, which is our second boundary at that point. Um, so once we have figured out the boundary, we have to figure out what this revolution is going to look like. So basically, I'm going to have um, this height here that is going to go my orange line minus my blue line, right? It's going to be this little height. And then we're going to revolve it. Uh, we're going to revolve it about the y-axis, like so. Um, so when we revolve it about the y-axis, what happens is here is that it's like we're taking a sheet of paper, right? <clears throat> um, a sheet that is infinitely thin. And so when we unwrap this sheet that has been um, glued around, we can say this gives us an area, right? Um, and it's an area as a function of x because, as we can see here. Um, as we move on, for example, if I'm right at the beginning, uh, my cylinder is going to be very, very tiny, right? And as I move on, my cylinder is going to get, um, the width is going to get bigger. So we can see here that this area definitely changes as a function of x, right? So therefore, my volume is going to be the sum from 0 to 3 of all these areas as a function of x. So when I sum them up, I am going to get a volume. Um, now we have to think about what this, how do we express this area as a function of x, right? And the first thing that we're going to do is um, this base right here, because the area is base times height, so this base is basically the, um, the base of our circle, which is the, its circumference, right? It goes like this. Um, now the circumference of any circle is just given by 2 pi r. And basically here we can see that the radius is the distance from the origin all the way out to wherever I'm at on my x-axis, right? Um, so we can see here that the, the radius basically goes from 0 all the way out to this value of x, wherever x is. So this is a no-brainer. It's just 2 pi x. Um, that's just 2 pi x for our circumference, right? And now let's think about the height. Well, the height here is... Um, the height goes like this. And this green line here is basically just the value of the orange curve uh, minus the value of the blue curve, right? We can think of it as this whole area, uh, sorry, this whole height of the orange curve minus the height of the blue curve. So if we take the bigger one and we subtract the smaller one, we're just left with this, um, with this little chunk right here, which is what we want. Let me remove all these drawings, yeah. So we can see here that it's the height um, beneath the orange minus the height beneath the blue to get that little chunk that we want. Um, so we can say here that the height is basically the orange, right? So 4x minus x squared and then minus the height of the blue, so minus x. Um, and then when we simplify this, we get 4x minus x, so we get 3x minus x squared. So therefore, our a of x is equal to base times height, which is equal to 2 pi x times 3x minus x squared, which is equal to 2 pi, and then I'm going to distribute the x, right? So this is 3x squared um, minus x cubed. Yeah, that is, uh, that is what we get. So now that we have an expression for the area, we are ready to integrate, right? Because our volume is just the integral of our ax 
um, and we have that expression already. So we're going to say here that this integral is equal to, I'm going to put the 2 pi outside because it's a constant, 2 pi from 0 to 3 of ax, which is 3x squared minus x cubed, and all of this times dx. So when I integrate it, this is still 2 pi, and then times, let's see, 3x cubed divided by 3 minus x to the fourth divided by 4, evaluated from 0 to 3, which is equal to 2 pi, let's see, that 3 over 3 cancels out, um, so it's just x to the power of 3, and now we only need to evaluate the upper boundary, the 3, because the 0, if we just plug in 0, right, everything else disappears, um, so thankfully it's very easy for us. So when we plug in 3, this just gives us 27 minus 3 to the power of 4 is 81 over 4. So this gives us, let's see, 2 pi times 27 minus 81 over 4. Um, let me put that in my calculator. Minus 81 over 4 plus 27 um, times 6.75. Actually, let me, let me put that in a fraction. Times 27 over 4. Um, times 27 over 4, which is equal to, this 2 cancels out with the 4, right? It just becomes 2 below. So 27 pi divided by 2. And that is the volume that we get when we um, revolve this area about the y-axis.